What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video shooting a quick little intro here in our beautiful Taj Mahal of an ice shack which is currently on land. But I want to say this, a little sales pitch quick. If you guys are coming up here to Upper Red Lake or Lake of the Woods this winter, you absolutely have to check out my buddy Chaz's operation at First City Guide Service. He runs a whole bunch of these absolutely gorgeous ice castles and uh, you know right now we're standing on lanks there's not that much ice but very soon he's going to have these out on the ice on a bunch of walleyes and this is maybe a step above what you would say the average accommodations it, are up here on red lake a, definitely a step above you know all of his shacks are <laughs> brand new this year or pretty much it seems year, like so. but uh you can you can you know the best part about you know staying with first city guide service is that they're not just a resort that when these shacks get on the ice they're going to be all over the place. If you catch fish, you catch fish. If you don't, you don't. You know, Chad is a fishing guide, so you know he's going to get you out there, tell you how to catch those fish, keep you on those fish, you know, in the shacks and things like that. So, 100%, if you're coming up to Red Lake this winter, especially in the next month or so, you know, definitely give him a call. I'll throw his information right here and down in the description. Well worth it. Amazing shacks, great accommodations, and uh, you're just going to catch a whole bunch of fish in comfort. But um, right now, we are about ready to roll out. Back onto Upper Red Lake for the day. Just a quick little one mile ride in the truck, dump the wheeler, get back on the ice. Predictions for today? I think we'll do good. He's, he's, I, I think we'll do really good, is what the prediction is, but it's Red Lake and it's early ice. And as the way yesterday went, might be a set line kind of day, so. Yeah, set line's kind of largely dominating a lot of what people are doing today, but you know what? We're not going to talk too much. Um, we're going to get out of the shack, jump in the truck here, put some boots on the ice, and hopefully catch some fish. All right, guys, welcome back to another video up here on Red Lake. Just getting set up, put a couple of tip-ups in. Just not even really starting to jig yet, and one went up. Now, I'm not seeing it move much. But as we all know, that doesn't really mean too much. What do you think? Are we going to pick one off right off the bat here? Oh, yeah, look at that right now. <laughs> starting the day off. Awesome. Without Red Lake Walleye, getting it done. That's what I'm talking about. You know, forceps at all? Oh, guys got a forceps on him. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Sun just coming up out here. Look at that. Perky, pudgy, 16, 17 inch walleyes up here on Upper Red. And we're on the ice doing it. He wants to get kept. Should we keep all right, guy decides to keep the first one. <laughs> Ballsy call, but they are tasty. Oh my gosh, right there. You guys see that on that pause like that? Just caught the first fish on the tip up. And you got one? Oh, Cody just caught one too. Look at this. Right off the bat, I actually switched it up today. I went straight to the the hyper rattle in that small UV green size. And look at that, first one of the day. That was a goofy bite. Most of the time they just kind of smash on the paws and those come flying up. That fish just kind of came up, touched it and went down. My tip just kind of loaded. Oh, look at this. And we got flag up behind us. Oh, here we go. Number one, look at that beauty. There we go. Starting the day off right up here on Upper Red. We're gonna let that fish go real quick. I don't think I'm gonna keep anything today. Let's get this flag real quick. Really see what's going on. That is fun. If it turns into all jigging, I'm not even gonna mess with the mess with the tip ups here in a second. We'll see if he's still on there. Tough to say. Line's going off to the side. Nope. False alarm on that guy. Well, anyways, Cody just caught one jigging. I just caught one jigging. I'm digging it. Oh, right there. Oh, look at that. Man, just gone. Absolutely gone. You know, we just 
just move spots out here. Cody's kind of running around jigging. I'm just kind of holding down the fort here. I actually did a little bait switch from that hyper rattle and put on the new one, the hyper hammer. And look at that bait. Look how far down that fish choked that bait. That is absolutely awesome. And one of my favorite parts about this bait, it's a brand new bait that this will be the first ice season we really get to use it. It's got this bigger back hook, so you hardly lose any fish on it. We also used it a little bit open water on a few different bodies of water out in North Dakota and on the Mississippi River, and it holds fish very, very well. It's also just a touch kind of lighter than your standard, if I can even get this thing out of here, my gosh. Look at that beautiful walleye right there. I'll show you the bait here in a second. Look at that, just absolutely demolished that. And that was good because I just put that bait on. And there it goes. But the hyper hammer is kind of that similar tail bait, that glide bait that you know a lot of us have been fishing for years through the ice. This is kind of in the smaller size here, but you know it's got this little flexible tail piece in here, so it never breaks. Super tough. It's got this bigger back hook, a little rattle right in the middle, and that it's just a little bit lighter because it's kind of hollowed out in the middle, and it's got this little bit you know synthetic tail that doesn't weigh as much, and it kind of glides a little bit more because it doesn't weigh as much. You know, a lot of times fishing these big heavy lead baits in shallow water. They don't have a lot of hang time, or this bait has a lot more hang time. We'll see if we can get a bit again, because that fish actually just rifled up. Absolutely pounded it. Oh, Cody. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, dude. Son. Oh, son. Dude. Right there, Cody. Oh, my God. He's stuck right there. Oh. Oh, hyper hammering. As Look Cody's drinking, as Cody's drinking his morning coffee. <laughs> Just pounding it. Oh. You guys, you saw how fast that oh, fish came Oh, let's get a up. shot of that bait. That is. Yeah, I'm actually bases. rolling on the main one. Here. Oh, look at that bait. That bait is awesome. That Super hyper. awesome colors to it. You got that blue, purple, and chartreuse. For some reason, I always like lemon head stuff. Are you like that too? Yeah. Or you like kind of a maybe a dull. No, guy? like you put those three colors together: a blue, a purple, and a chartreuse, and those mm. are like walleye candy. Basically, everywhere I've ever been. And we're not, we're not like marking a pile of fish right now, but when they're coming into this bait, they are just rifling up and smashing it. And it's just mainly that we're not around like a ton of fish right now. I don't think either of us have jigged one yet while we're like around the other person. We're always like way separate parts yeah. of the, the, our spread here, but. Yeah, put your whole knife boy up. Another nice one right there. Look at that, beautiful Red Lake walleye. On. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, guy's hungry. Guy's a hungry what guy doing? this morning. What are you doing? On the hyper hammer. Like I said, that's a smaller <laughs> size. But uh, he wolfed it down good and just kind of basically the action you want to kind of impart when you're doing this. You know, we're only fishing eight feet of water right here. But kind of what I'll do with it is keep it up higher off the bottom than you probably normally would. And I'll make it walk those big circles, kind of like you would with the jig and rabbit shiver, you know, hyper rattle, those type baits. And I'll kind of do this action with the rod right here. Now, as that fish comes in, I'll let that bait settle a little bit more. Pop it, let it settle, and then almost kind of downsize. One thing I always say is jig through the bites. You know, a lot of guys have this tendency when they're jig fishing through the ice, they see the fish get on the screen and they're like, oh, just staring at their rod and not moving it. You notice that? Oh, 100%. <laughs> I see that all the time. And like, the biggest thing is when Tom's doing that little thing, but he's jigging it, he's jigging it. Yep. A lot of times that rod will just kind of load up on you. You're not yep. feeling a whack. You're more so feeling that rod load up, and especially when you're fishing shallower water like we are. You want more of that soft tip. Yeah, and you can see here, it's kind of a good point to talk about this. I'm fishing with the uh, Elliott Rods Evolution Series, which is the only ice rods I really use much anymore. And their 44 inch light is one of my favorite rods, especially when you're fishing shallow water. Sometimes if you're fishing with a rod that's too stiff, it'll load like this, and those you're gonna get such violent head shakes in short water, and those fish are gonna ping around under the ice. And when your rod's bending like this and you're fighting a fish, that's not good. What you really want is a rod that loads like this when you're fighting a fish, and especially in shallow water, because you lose a lot less fish. So having an extra load through here in this light action rod, it's got plenty of tip to work this size bait. If I were to go bigger, I'd go to a stiffer rod. But especially in the shallow water, going to a little bit of fluorocarbon, six pound that's got flex in it, going to a rod that loads very deep into it is kind of a game changer. And it'll really turn your day around from just, you know, getting bites and losing fish to really ultimately catching a lot of those fish you hook.
hooked up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Kind of midday lull right now. Not getting a ton of them. Getting some flags still. A lot of a lot of fish just dropping them. Just a, a lot of fish just dropping them, but you can see another nice red lake walleye there. Kind of green. A little different color than I'm used to uh, catching my walleyes. They're a little more gold, but we'll take them. Oh my gosh, all over me. Two of them. Right there, fish on. <laughs> Man, worked those ones for a little bit. Just a little guy on that hyper hammer there. A couple of them came in at the same time and I could tell this was gonna be the smaller mark. Look at that right there, that little lemon head. I don't even know what this color is, but I'll link it down below. It's definitely doing a decent job today. Just kind of had some clouds move in and our bite kind of died. There we go, just kind of running around with the chesty GoPro on, catching a few more of these red lake walleyes. Little guy right there. He'd be a good eater if we wanted to, but I think we're gonna let that one go for a little bit here. And uh, send her back down. Kind of just, you know, I've been talking to a few different people out here and it kind of seems like the deal is everybody's catching a few. Nobody's really catching like a lot. It kind of seems like fish are overall just kind of pretty scattered and we're probably working harder than we need to to just catch the fish um, that we kind of want to. I, think, I don't know if moving around really helps you more in this situation or helps you less, but Definitely catching a few fish here on the hyper hammer. We're just gonna kind of keep working. And one thing I always look for when we're out here is bait. And you know, a lot of times what you'll see is you might have, you know, looking at your flash or looking at whatever kind of sonar you're using and seeing a bunch of little marks, like three, four, five feet down. Those are, I think, a lot of shiners, little smaller shiners that are running around. Anytime you have that around, it seems like there's a few walleyes around. So we're just gonna kind of keep snapping the hyper hammer here and uh, hope a few more show up. Fish on, oh yeah, nice fish. <laughs> Look at that guy. And man, you know, up in shallow water. Doesn't really get much more fun. And we're kind of getting later in the afternoon now. Had a bunch of clouds roll in. And but you got a fish going? That's a good eater. Oh, Cody says he wants to eat it. He thinks it looks tasty. He's like a hundred yards away. I don't even know how he knows it looks tasty. <laughs> but he has a feeling that this is gonna be a tasty one, which is all right. And we're just gonna keep a couple of fish today to eat for dinner. And uh, the best part about Red Lakes, it just has a lot, a lot of these quality, like eater size fish, these run of the mill kind of 16, 17, 18 inches. And there's another one. I will say this, if you guys are coming up to Red Lake right now, or thinking about doing it, bring your set lines, bring your tip ups, bring your dead sticks, bring, you know, whatever you like to run for kind of a dead sticking presentation, well worth the time and investment just to set those lines out quick. And it's definitely paying off. And there we go, just another beautiful, Red Lake Wally, out here early ice. Gotta love it. There we go, hooked up. There we go, what a nice fish. <laughs> I love this, I love it. It was definitely one of those ones that is over 17. Right in the rubber of the corner. But yeah, nice, nice fish. 
beauty of a fish. Sun's kind of starting to go down. You can't really see the sun today, but I don't know. Beauty. Get this one back. Oi! Right there, hooked up. Feels like a pretty decent fish here. Oh yeah, look at that guy. Look at that guy. We are right at that, whoa, whoa, whoa. right at that prime time window right now. And man, look at that, we'll get, it, get a little bit for you guys. That is what I'm talking about right there. Crushing a lot of these kind of last light, prime time walleyes up here. Just crushing a whole bunch of these last slight walleyes up here in Upper Red Lake. Just an absolute blast. We'll get them popped off real quick and uh, send them back here. Once again, I like running these single hooks a lot because they're super easy to to take out when they're if the fish do get hooked deep. Just put the players on it, turn it around, and it'll just pull right out like that more times than not. Look at that, just a beauty right there. Let's let that guy go. Now look at this, man. It is the prime time witching hour right now. And believe it or not, the jig rods are not popping quite like the dead sticks are. Oh, daddy likes that. Daddy loves that. Oh, done deal, son. Done deal. Oh. Oh. Give me some of that. Give you some of this? Oh, yeah, dude. Fish after fish after fish up here. Pretty good little evening window. I love the evenings out here. You know, even into the nighttime hour. One of those really cool lakes that does have a night bite that happens. You know, a lot of the resorts and you know a lot of the guides take advantage of that you know fishing those late windows of the day and get a lot of these really nice much larger fish as you can see there you know that is definitely one of those ones that is over 17 we're gonna get this one back get back after it you know the bite when it was hot right now so bye bye There, day is kind of coming to an end here. Another day that was kind of dominated by tip up fishing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, right there. <laughs> awesome. Fish on, last light. You guys got to watch the flag go up. He ran a little bit of line out here. Look at that guy. He's <laughs> eater walleye. Another just eater sized walleye up here on Red Lake. Look at that. Just as perky and pretty as they get right there, huh? Alright, well there we go. Another nice red lake walleye on the ice and uh, not too shabby of a day, you know, not crazy action, but we're going to kind of wrap things up out here, get off the ice, get back to the ice shack and uh, we'll do a little day wrap up and uh, where things are going and things like that. So let's, let's stay tuned. Let's do the best part about ice fishing, packing up and uh, we'll see you guys later. And we are back inside the shack. Um, we're back in the sleeper for tonight on land. And uh, just going to do a quick little wrap up, eating some pizza and uh, editing some video. How many fish did we probably catch today? In between that 20 to 30 fish. You know. A lot of fish, you know, was not really good numbers. You know, it wasn't like Tom's got one on, I got one on, a flag pops. 
you know, until it was, you know, low light conditions, whether that was right away in the morning or later in the afternoon, like yeah. you never saw that happening for the most part, maybe like once in the morning, maybe mm -hmm. two, two times in the afternoon. So yeah, most time on red, my experience is you can catch a fish anywhere, but most time you'll move, 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 catch fish, catch fish, catch fish, and you'll get an area and just catch like a lot of fish. And, uh, it's kind of seems like talking to everybody that a lot of people have experienced the same thing it's just kind of a lot of scattered fish and i'm sure that'll kind of change and fish will kind of group up more and more and uh yeah i mean but you can't really complain first no. ice up here on upper red lake always a good time and uh we kind of got the first you know little uh run of fish out of the way you know you spend weeks kind of waiting for ice fishing get to do it and then you kind of get the first little jitters out of the way on the first trip but tomorrow we got some different plans yeah, I don't even know if we're going to share with you guys what we're going to do tomorrow. I don't think it's going to be on Red Lake. It's going to be running around looking for ice, looking for fish, that kind of a day on a few different bodies of water. Maybe walleyes, maybe pike, maybe crappies, maybe bluegills. So yeah, we got some different plans for tomorrow. Hopefully we get some good content from doing that. This kind of kicks off all of our big ice fishing stuff. Ice fishing pretty much every day from now until probably the 1st of March, end of February, somewhere in there. So I think we're all excited about that. And hopefully you guys enjoy a lot of our ice fishing content. Any last words, Cody? Yeah, I mean, if you guys are coming up to Red Lake and you hear all these bad reports, you know, guys, you know, we've heard them, you know, when we go in and grab lunch or dinner or whatnot, you know, we caught three fish, we caught five fish. You're going to see a lot of reports like that. But if you're, you know, motivated and you move around, you know, get in front of fish, you know, you're going to catch a lot of fish. And as, as time progresses, I mean, you get more people out here and there's more movement happening and you have a lot of, a lot more transportation happening out there on the water, you know, whether that's people pulling sleds around, people yeah. just driving, you know, ATVs, UTVs, snowmobiles, stuff Moving like that. Moving away from everybody. These fish are just going to kind of scatter, and especially in these shallow areas, you know, they're going to kind of push out to transitions and little rock seams and stuff like that. And you're going to find a lot more fish sitting on that kind of stuff. Yeah, but kind of the first big kickoff up here, any of these big flat lakes, always moving around more productive than generally just sitting still. So 100%. Yep. So I appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to get back to editing. We're going to wrap this up, get back in the truck tomorrow morning before the sun's up, hopefully find some more ice and uh, we'll see you guys next time.